Good morning, church. It's good to see you here this morning. Uh, Take this moment to silence your cell phones and any other devices that you have. And as you're doing that, let's stand. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. You're going to have to take those little books in front of you and open those up. Uh, The preacher didn't have any notes for sermon this week, so I gave Rhonda the week off for putting the words up on the screen. So we're going to have our fellowship hymn, The Family of God. We'll sing a verse, have our time of fellowship, and come back and sing another. 386. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Together.
continue to worship together. Let's take our hymnals. You may remain seated. We'll turn to hymn 533. He lives. We'll sing all three stanzas. 533.
Amen. Good to see you this morning. Opportunities for the week starts this evening with our evening worship service. First one is uh, choir. You have an opportunity to be back at 4.30 uh, and uh, meet with Scott. And I, I thought, Scott, you were having two new uh, choir members this morning when the choir came out. And Charlotte and Larry came out with them. I thought, wow, they've joined the choir. What about that? And I said, I began to get excited. And then I saw them go right on back. And, and, and then I, 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 I just knew that Larry had joined the choir. <laughs> oh, so, and then even worship service at 5.30, we meet and uh, look at the Word of God together tonight. And then um, I want you to pay attention in the bulletin. It says, TLBA, as uh, Tuskegee Lee Baptist Association Mission Opportunity. Um, the Fuller uh, Center, uh, I think they're out of Georgia. I'm not absolutely sure about that, or maybe Tennessee. But anyway, uh, they're coming in September the 30th through October the 4th, uh, and they are building 10 new houses over in the Beauregard area where the uh, storms went through. And uh, if you would like to participate, you cannot just show up. You need to go to the Fuller Foundation uh, online and register your name. And uh, they will ask you what you might be able to do. And uh, if you do not have any clue what you can do, just uh, put down there that uh, just helper. And they will just need helpers. Back whenever uh, I used to go on more mission trips than I'm going on uh, right now, uh, some guys would come and uh, they'd go on those mission trips with us and uh, they would not have any particular skill that they would do and so uh, they they swept and there is a lot of sweeping to do and a lot of cleaning up to do so those are things that uh, need to be done as well so if you are interested just go online and go to the Fuller Foundation and register there let me draw your attention again <clears throat> that uh, our budget is $2,996.91, and <clears throat> we need that in order to uh, carry on the ministries of our church, and so we pray that God will speak to your heart, that you'll give openly and honestly to that which God leads you to do, and to participate and be a part. Acts ministry, as you go into the fellowship hall, there's a basket right there on the left, uh, if you bring the rice and chili and put that there, we would appreciate that. We have somebody that takes that and delivers that to them, and we are grateful for them. Let me just say a word about next Sunday. Next Sunday is Youth Sunday. Tanner will be preaching. There will be a different order of service, and there will be no choir, and uh, we will have a good time. And we uh, look forward to that time together, and we will have a covered dish lunch Afterward, we ask you to bring a covered dish, and we will meet in the fellowship afterward uh, in the fellowship hall and have lunch together and enjoy one another and um, look forward to that time together and Tanner preaching next Sunday. And so uh, we look forward to all those things. Wednesday night, we're looking at uh, discerning the voice of God, and we'll continue the, in that line uh, this coming Wednesday night come to the Lord's Supper, and I'm not one that believes that we tack it on. Uh, usually you have a preacher that preaches a message, and then when the message is over, they have the Lord's Supper. Uh, I used to do that, and then God just spoke to me and said, this is a message, and uh, just make it the message. And so for a number of years now, I've just made it the message. I do want to uh, talk about three things right quick like on the front of the communion table it says do this in remembrance of me and that is in remembrance of Jesus so I want to speak about three things that I want us to remember about Jesus this morning first of all I want you to remember that Jesus spoke the truth of God Jesus said himself that I did not come to do my own will I came to do the will of the father 
and he came to speak the truth of the Father, and when he spoke the truth of the Father, he spoke it in love. That's something that you and I need to, to learn to do. It's all right to speak the truth, we just need to speak it in love, and some people oftentimes do not speak it in love. They speak it uh, out of the wrong emotion, and so we need to learn to speak the truth in love. Second of all, not only did Jesus come to uh, speak the truth and speak it in love, but he also came and died for your and for my sins. He had no sins of his own for which to die. He died for our sins. He became our substitute. He became our atonement for our sins. And uh, we need to recognize that, and we need to honor him as that, and we need to remember that this morning whenever we uh, take the bread and uh, take the juice. Uh, we need to remember that Jesus died for our sins. The third thing I want you to remember this morning is is that there's a lot of things I could ask you to remember. And, and we talk about death, burial, and resurrection. And, and Jesus is going to say to us in a moment when we read the Scripture that uh, you do this uh, remembering his death, burial, and resurrection. But I also want you to remember this morning he's coming again. He has not left us and where that we're just out there floundering in life and that when life is over, when you pass from time to eternity, it's not over. And Jesus is coming again. Jesus may come for you and for me in, by death, or he may come in the rapture of the church one day. And uh, I'm assured that will happen. I have no clue when it will happen. And those in whom are, uh, they, they spend so much time in trying to figure it out have set dates, and those dates have come and gone. And the Scripture is plain and clear. No one knows but God the Father himself. And one day God the Father himself will say, it's time for you to go get my church. Just like one day, whenever God the Father looked down, and he chose a young lady by the name of Mary and said that the 400 silent years was coming to an end and it's time for me to speak again. And I love what Hebrews chapter 1 says that in times past, God has spoken through us through the prophets, but in the last days, he has spoken to us through his son. And when Jesus came, somebody says, uh, when will the last days be? When Jesus came, the last days began. And we are in the last days. And whenever that will end, I have no clue. And the Bible doesn't give us an indication. Except to say that there will be some signs that we can follow. And uh, we can follow those signs. And all of those signs are prevalent today and have been for a number of years. So what Jesus said was, was that he would come as one unexpected, like a thief in the night. We can identify that with our church for uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, I came in the side door, coming in the fellowship hall one morning. I came in part, got out, opened the door and started in. And whenever I walked in and looked to my left into the, to the uh, kitchen, I noticed there was a difference. Every drawer was pulled out. And I, I started in, and, and I noticed down to my left where we had a TV setting, it was missing. And I backed out. And I called the police first, and then I called Jesse. And uh, then when I, and I, I wasn't going the rest, the rest of the way. I was waiting on somebody to come to go and the rest of this church with me. And... Uh, Jesse got over here and we started going through the church and we found that we had broke into. We were not expecting that. And Jesus says, that's when I'll come. Whenever you're not expecting it, I'll show up. We come now in uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 
uh, we follow verse 7 through 22. And the day of unleavened bread came, on which the Passover must be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, and he had told them, Go and make ready for us the Passover that we may eat. And they said to him, Where wilt thou that we make ready? And he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house whereinto he goes. And you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnish, and there make ready. And they went and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the apostles with him, and he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I shall not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I say unto you, I shall not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread. Now, and he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the cup in like manner after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, even that which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goeth as it has been determined, but woe unto the man through whom he is betrayed. And we look down at John chapter 6, verse 58. This is the bread that came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. And then Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, And according to the law, I may almost say, All things are cleansed with blood, and apart from shedding of blood, there is no remission. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Gentlemen, you come. That day Jesus had instructed two of his disciples to go and make ready the, the Passover meal. The Passover meal was not the Lord's Supper. But as they made the Passover meal and brought it together and they all came together and Jesus came and uh, they sat down on their pillows, they began to relax. Jesus began to take the meal and pass it around and as he did that he changed the Passover meal into what we call the Lord's Supper and he took the bread 
and he gave thanks for it. If we looked in the scripture, we see that he tells a lot of stories and does some teaching. And then after he's blessed the bread and passed it around, talks to them about what he's going to do, he gets up and he serves them. He takes and girdles himself up and he begins to wash their feet. And they have conversation. And he points out that one of them is going to betray him. And toward the end of the meal, he tells that one to go do what he's going to do. We come to that point where they were dipping the bread and that one leaves. And Jesus finally with a cup two things I want you to remember today is we take the bread and we take the cup. The bread represents the body of Christ, but it is not the body of Christ. It's only symbolic of the body of Christ. We are not Catholic, but Catholics believe that when you take the bread, you're actually taking the bread of Christ. They believe whenever you drink the wine, or the juice that you're actually drinking the blood of Christ. We look at it from a different perspective, and the perspective is the bread and the wine are symbolic of the death and the shed blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He died that we might have eternal life, and we remember this putting our focus and our attention on Jesus and Jesus alone. All right? No, no, no. Take, take the blood. took the bread and broke it and then passed it out. We've already done that. And then he blessed it. Father, 
We thank you for your son Jesus in whom he has given us eternal life through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. We're grateful that you're our father, you're the lover of our soul, you're the caretaker of our lives, and we honor you today by taking this bread, symbolic of your broken body for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And on that day, they took the wine and passed it. wine and Jesus raised it up and blessed it Father we take this juice today in remembrance of the shed blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary we remember what Hebrews says that without shedding of blood there could be no remission and Father we're grateful that Jesus took our place became our substitute became our atonement and satisfied the Father. And so we're grateful for the shed blood of Jesus and for our eternal home in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. And on that day, they had conversation carried on and the Bible says as they got up to leave they went out singing Scott come and lead us would you stand with us please 